12 stones that represented the 12 tribes of Israel. And so this is what Abiathar comes down with, um, and he, he talks to David. So he comes down with it, and I'm at seven, and it was told Saul, remember Saul is the one that's trying to kill David. Somebody told Saul that David was at Kilah. Because Saul couldn't find David, and when he found him, he most certainly was going to kill him. But somebody told him, oh, wait, you know, David and his men went into Kyla and fought with the Philistines and got all of their stuff, and they saved Kyla. And Saul says, oh, is that where David is? I've been looking for him to kill him. So let's keep reading here. And it was told Saul, I'm starting at seven again, that David was come to Kyla and Saul said, God had delivered him into my hands for he is shut in by entering into a town that had gates and bars. And remember, I told you it was a fenced city. Kyla was, and he was saying, in other words, if David is in there, I got him now because he won't be able to get out before I can get down in there and, 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 and trap him down in there and kill him. And Saul called all the people together to war to go down to Kila to besiege David and his men. And David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him. And he said to Abiathar the priest, he said, give me that ephod. Because Abiathar had brought it down with him. David said, give it to me. Then said David, O Lord, God of Israel, thy servant had certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Kila to destroy that whole city just for me because he's after me. But he's going to kill everybody in Kila because that's the way Saul kind of did his business and work. Not only was he going to catch David, he was going to kill the men that were with David. Then he was going to turn the city upside down because he would have felt like Kila was on David's side. So, as I told you, it is not improper to ask God, you know, for things that we need or want. We, we should. We must. The Word of God tells us that we do, and that's what we see David doing. But, of course, our prayer shouldn't always be concerning us, and we should always be seeking the will of God. So then David says, well, in 11, will the men of Kila deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down as thy servant has heard? O Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant, tell me, Lord. And let's look at what the Lord said. Because this, this is the crux of my lesson tonight. The Lord said to David, he will come down. Because David said, well, is Saul going to come down here to get me? And the Lord said, yeah. Then said David, okay, well, will the men of Kyla, will they deliver me and, and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, yep. <laughs> Y'all got to hear me tonight. Because at first when he prayed over in four, come on, 23 and four, the Lord said, I got you. He said, go get them. Take them out. So I'm thinking by the time we get to 11, is Saul going to come after me? I'm thinking God is going to say, uh, uh, no, no, he won't come for you. You know, I got you. I'll protect you. God said, yeah, he's coming. He's, he, he's coming. <laughs> he said, well, wait a minute. When, when he get here, uh, the people that I just saved, Kyla, are they going to turn me over? God said, yeah. And sometimes we want to know, am I going to get fired? God said, yeah. We never hear him say that because that's not what we want to hear him say. We ask, are people going to die? Yeah, they probably will die. Oh, that couldn't be God. Because I expect you to save everybody. But let's go back to the book of Ecclesiastes. There's a time for everything. Is there not? We don't consider that there is a time for everything when we pray. We don't expect God to ever say anything like what he said to David. Saul is coming and they're going to turn you over. This is why things come upon us unawares and we get mad at God. Why didn't you save them? Because you didn't hear me tell you that they were going to die. You shouldn't be telling me, God, that people are going to die. There's a time for everything. There's a time to die and there's a time to live. 
That's what the book of Ecclesiastes says. I told you that was life. Somebody talk to me in the chat. Is this making any sense? We don't hear God because we don't want to hear him say something that we don't want to happen. David didn't want Saul to come and get him. And he did not want the men from Kyla, who they had just saved their town. They didn't want them to turn them over, but God said it's surely going to happen. We have to mature in prayer because when we pray, God, your will be done, it's not our will a lot of times. And we don't trust God enough. Let me keep reading because I'm going to show you how God will take care of us even if the answer is not what we would like it to be. Lord, are are we going to end up divorced? Yeah, yeah, probably. Probably. Lord, is my child going to jail? Yep, they're going to have to go. I mean, we, we, don't, we don't even hear that kind of stuff because God should never talk to us that way. That's a sign of immaturity, y'all. We've got to mature in prayer because sometimes the answer is not what you want. But if it's the will of God, it's going to all be okay. We have to learn to trust him that way. Our faith must mature and grow in God. People don't like it when you talk like this. Well, 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 I mean, but, you know. Well, but go back over Ecclesiastes. It's the layout of life that we get some of all of this. So some of our prayers are going to be time to kill a thing. It's time to, you know, you're going to cry in this season. You know, some things might happen. So let me keep reading. I want to go over 12 and read 12 again. Then said David, will the men of Kila deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, they're going to put y'all out. They're going to give you to Saul. Then David and his men, which were about 600, they got up and they got out. (laughs) They started moving. Because when it's not going to turn out like you thought it was going to turn out, you got to come on with plan B sometimes. We don't want to do that. And we get mad at God. Well, God didn't answer my prayer. Or I thought that the Lord was going to save them and they weren't going to die. Or I thought this was going to happen. I thought I wasn't going to, you know, lose. No, in life you get all of it. You get all of it in life. So they got up and they were like... Everybody better find somewhere to go because this is not going to be good. And I'm making light of it, but that's basically what they did. We got up, they got up, and about 600 of them, and they got up and departed out of, of Kyla and went with us wherever they could go. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Kyla, and he forbore to go forth. And David, he stayed in the wilderness. He's out in the woods in strongholds and remained in a mountain in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day. But, but, but God delivered him not into his hand. Saul couldn't catch him. And we may look, it may look like God didn't answer his prayer. And God did answer his prayer. He did. And maybe God is answering your prayer and you just don't like the answer. They got up and they started leaving. So if I know things are going kind of crazy on my job, I pray before the Lord and say, God, am I going to lose this job? And he says, yep, I'm a fool not to get into action. But most of the times we don't hear him say yes, that this is going, you're going to lose it. So then we get mad and say, well, I just don't feel God like you've treated me right now. I've lost my job and I don't know what I'm going to do. And if you had answered. And we see several instances. If you will read about Mary and Martha in the loss of their brother, Lazarus. And, 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 and Jesus is standing there trying to try and explain something to Martha. She's totally not hearing him. She says, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Totally not hearing him saying he's coming back. 
she's like, well, yeah, I know he's coming back, but at the end of the day, you know, in the end and in heaven and all that, you know, she's really having a, a hard time with it. And I'm telling you, that is some of us right now. We've gone before the Lord. We sat there, we waited. He gave us the answer. It wasn't what we want to hear. We said he didn't answer and then when something happened, we said that he, he forsake, he forsook us. He left us. He, I don't know why God is so we're just angry with God. He's not going to always say what we want him to say, but as long as we pray for his will to be done, He's going to help us because it goes on to say, but God delivered him not into his hands. He would not let Saul catch him. Let's pray right quick and then, and then we're finished for tonight. Lord, we, we do thank you, God, for the coming together on tonight. And God, we want to be mature in our prayers. And we want to understand that in life we get good, we get bad, we laugh, we mourn, we cry, we hate, we kill. God, we get it all in life. And sometimes the prayer is, yeah, yeah, Saul is on his way to get you and they're going to turn you over. But God, even in that, you have a way of protecting us and keeping us because you love us. And it is not your plan, God, to hurt us. But life brings certain things that everybody has to go through, God, but you will keep and you will protect us in them all. And for that, God, in maturity, God, in that we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, we'll see you all on next Thursday. Invite someone. God bless. <laughs>